Welcome back to They Talk, fellow talkers. And on this episode, we're gonna talk about Kartanolaisuus, which was this crazy sect or a cult inside the Finnish Lutheran Church from the 1920s to 1960s. Although there are still few members out there as far as the rumors go. But let's welcome back to our show, Miss Alexandra from Strike the Truth blog. Hi, thanks for having me again. I'm looking forward to this crazy discussion about sects and cults. Yeah, and this one is surprising to me because I wasn't aware that our churches here have these kinds of like uh, sects beneath them that are this hardcore and violent as these cartonalizers turn out to be. Yeah, isn't Finland kind of a non-religious country? I mean, usually you hear about these things in the Bible Belt of America or some deeply religious country in Africa or something. Yeah, well, or in Guyana where the apocalyptic cult made a suicide back in the day. But yeah, no, um, Jonestown. Yeah, Jonestown. That's a that actually has a bit similarities with this one because this cult also was expecting an apocalypse or Armageddon. Their whole uh, idea was based solely on that. So <laughs> you mentioned this uh, Finnish being a bit not that religious or at least tame in these these ways. And you would be correct. Finnish people are mainly Lutherans. And, you know, it's a bit more ordinary interpretation of a Christianity. Even the Catholics are more hardcore what comes to these religious beliefs and uh, and ways than Lutherans. And we are a bit more ascetic and a bit more gray. And I guess that's one of the reasons why this Alma Kartano, who actually was a founding member of this Kartanolaisuus, of course, it was named after her, started to deviate their own uh, ways from the Lutheran church. Do you think that maybe she was influenced by something else? Maybe something, some other religious or something? Because it just makes no sense to me why she would be so crazy religious when the religion itself is not as hardcore as Catholicism or Orthodoxism or something. Well, we have to remember that back in those days when she was born and when she lived, she was born in 1885 and died 1953. Uh, most of the people, and at least in the countryside, were religious one way or another. People tend to churches Sundays and, you know, and she was brought up as a religious person. But then at one point on her youth, She studied to be this traveling teacher and mm-hmm. she traveled and teach from place to place. And at one point she was even traveling uh, in a Russia. And of course, in the 1910s, we were part of the Russian Empire. But she was actually traveling there a bit for Easter and she made herself familiar with these kinds of Russian sculptures, castrator and closed communities that used to punish themselves if they have done sin by spanking and beating each other. And they were heavily <clears throat> against any sexual behavior, sexuality in life. And even marriage was from Satan. It was just basically legalized form of Satanism <laughs> or Satan worshiping for these people and you know she got influences from there that But. sounds really crazy and so different to any other well i mean i've heard of these things in other cults as well you know that sex is usually banned from members but then the li- leader of the cult let's say has free reign with whomever they choose to have relations with was that the case here There are definitely hints to that sort of behavior, although as far as I know, they weren't straightforward sexual advances, but they had these kind of rituals or manners that were crossing the personal boundaries heavily. And we talk about those things a bit later when we come to the punishments 
and, and rituals. But let's go back to the beginning. And as I said, this operated under the Lutheran Church, but they had their own sect. And it was actually co-led by this Tilda Reunanen, uh, who was known as Sleeping Preacher. Mm, well, can I guess that she was sleeping and dreaming something? She held these testimonies uh, that she testified under a, some sort of a trance or even a sleep. And the God was speaking through her. So everything that she said under this sleeping was basically uh, words from God. Sounds and, pretty crazy. Well, not if you're a believer. So then it's all good. And these people led what was at its height 200 persons cult or sect. That's quite a lot of members, actually, for such a weird sect. Yeah, it is. And in a weirdly small area. It wasn't spread all over the Finland. And I can put the map there for people to see how widely spread cult or a sect it was. And as I said earlier, these people were waiting for apocalypse that this basically this Alma Kartano was promising to them. And yeah, yeah. did you say it was in Huittinen? Yeah. I know at least Huittinen these days, it's a very small city. Yeah, you would be correct. The fact is that early 20th century, it had 9,415 people and 80% of the areas were working men or worked in farm housing. So do you think that this being such a small remote area where I presume a lot of people weren't particularly educated, could have that influenced them to believe in this? Kartanoism. Yeah, I think that has played a major part because now you're talking about education and all. Somehow this Alma Kartano and uh, Tilda Reunanen were able to convince these farmers, working men, that the end of the world would be coming. And in order to be selected to heaven and not be sent down to hell, you would need to be extra pure. And the Lutheran church was too lenient. And even the Bible translation or the new prints that came out later were wrong ones. And it were basically tainted by Satan. And you need to be strict. You needed to basically deny yourself from outside contact. So you were to only to be in contact with your fellow brothers and sisters in faith. Can I ask, how did they stop these men and women from fornicating? I mean, isn't that some kind of a natural desire people have? Yes, uh, they were praying a lot. They were preaching a lot against this kind of activity and they were punishing the members, even the members who were merely suspected of such things pretty heavily. And Those kinds of punishments were known as the stones of God, Jumalan Kivet. And these stones would be Tilda Reunanen and Alma uh, Kartano, who would be sitting on top of these persons and basically crushing them. And they were blessing the genitals of these persons. And you have to remember and understand that these persons who were now being punished were lying there totally naked. And these two women, uh, Tilda Reunanen was also being mentioned of being extra stout, uh, were sitting on top of the person's chest and on top of their loins in some cases, and they were putting their hands on the person's genitals and everybody was praying. I'm sorry, I can't help but be so confused by this ritual. I mean... They're trying to get rid of fornication, but they're the way they're doing it is so, so sexual in a way, isn't it? Yes, and uh, there are allegations that this uh, Reunanen and Kartano were actually sexually abusing their members. But there was also another form of punishment, and it was whipping 
and beating. And there are quite horrific examples of these things. Uh, so the story goes, and this is actually investigated and found out to be true, that two of their own members who lived in Sipo, this young girl and a young man were suspected of fornication. So the members took them and they beat the living shit out of the guy. They beat him so badly that the guy was immobilized and almost became an invalid. That That's crazy. And the girl got the similar treatment, but they weren't beating her. They were whipping her and they whipped her until she lost her consciousness. That is not that's not okay and that should have never happened to these people i mean just for even allegedly sleeping together it's ridiculous and and that wasn't even in the case of sleeping together they were going to do these kinds of things if they suspected you had impure thoughts and they suspected everyone to have impure thoughts because people are people and so why would anybody stick around after seeing that kind of a treatment? Because they were convinced, they were heavily convinced that the end of the world as they know it would come in 1933. And when it didn't came, it was pushed back in 1939 when the Winter War broke and then to the 1940s and so forth. They were so heavy in the beliefs and and these, you have to remember and understand that these kinds of cults who are like restricted from outside contact are basically such suggesting their like fellow members. They are policing their fellow members and they are basically somehow forcing their own beliefs to other persons and they are as collective believing the same thing. Yeah, of course, I understand how the cults work, but... I'm just wondering now, because if we think about cults in general and cult leaders, you have people like Charles Manson who are very like charismatic and people want to be around them. And that's why people believe them and they stick around even when things go like this, that people get beat up to death. So I'm just from a psychological perspective, I'm interested to know kind of how this Alma Kartano and Tilda Reunanen were keeping people there in such a kind of enthrallment, you know? Were they so charismatic or what What was their kind of draw? Why, why were people so interested in them and disbelief? As far as I know, Kartano was a charismatic person and she was traveling teacher. So she traveled from place to place and she basically knew how people and people minds work. And then when uh, she visited Russia, she was convinced that the end of the world would be coming and uh, all the sexual carnal desires are from Satan and souls need to be saved and the punishments of sin needs to be extreme because the stakes are the heaven and hell. And when she came to this Huittinen and, and put on this uh, cult, she was able to convince people with her skills that this thing is actually real. Maybe she just believed her own kind of bullshit so much that everybody else believed it with her. Yeah, yeah, they weren't rich or getting any riches, so they were basically devoted uh, Kartano people, Kartanoism people themselves. And <sighs> still I have to mention this thing and tell me if this brings anything to the mind. They needed to be controlling people and they people's desires so these kinds of, you know, impure thoughts wouldn't be suggested by your own behavior. So they controlled the women's dressing. Women had to wear long clothes and heads needed to be covered so they wouldn't encourage men with skin or with the open long hair or such things. That sounds typical to other modern day religions like we have Islam. Yeah, uh, there was also another thing that was used to control the sexual urges 
and it was with with diet. You weren't allowed to eat meat or blood related foods because it was believed that that would encourage your body to have carnal thoughts. Well, that to me is very interesting because I mean, I'm a vegetarian. I've been vegetarian for 10 years or something. And let's say it doesn't really affect my thoughts. But I guess in those times, you wouldn't have a grocery store full of uh, vegetarian alternatives. I guess you are basically correct. They weren't offered the variety of vegetarian food options, but they also could eat something that the uh, vegetarians these days can't eat. Well, I mean, you can still eat like eggs and milk and things as a vegetarian, but I'm just thinking that, you know, back in those days, I think iron is one of the main sources, what you get from meat and blood. And back in those days, maybe people didn't have any iron alternatives because, you know, mushrooms come in autumn and then the vegetables come in spring and kind of end when winter comes. So a lot of those people would probably be quite weak, maybe not malnourished, but, you know, their diets wouldn't be so balanced. Yeah, and they were people who did heavy work on daily basis, heavy manual labor. Cardinalized believed that heavy labor is good for the soul and the body and makes you closer to God. But let's talk about sickness and death for a short while here. And it is being reported and documented that people on their deathbeds were heavily, even some cases, forced to pray and praise loudly to God. And and the members of this Kartanolaiset were gathered next to the bed. Uh, and this Alma Kartano was leading the chore, if you will. And they were repeating the phrases that Alma had teach them and prayers. And they were telling the person constantly that you don't die, you don't die, you deserve to live. And it's certain thing that you live. Were they just saying that the power of God is going to make you feel better and these people would die anyway? Yeah, they basically died anyway. And I guess they believed that they got into heaven when they had led this pure life as a part of Kartanolaiset. Okay, that's that's a very sad way to die. But now I'm interested to hear about these children. Because I think... They didn't seem like they had a good life there. No, let's talk about children inside Kartanolaisus. And these kids were taken outside of Kartanolaiset circle from the people who trusted their kids to them. And Kartanolaiset put these kids to be preachers. And even young as four-year-old kids were teach to preach and testify the God's word. So, in a way, they use the kids as emotional manipulation to get people to join their cult. Yes, and in a way, as a branding tool, that this was this specific, special thing that only Kartanolaiset had. And when you were part of Kartanolaiset, even the kids understood the God's word. Do you think that those kids actually did what they were told? or? Oh, they did what they were told of because they didn't have any other options. They were encouraged which in this case mean forced to read and study the bible and study the testimonies that they had to give they were not allowed to play at all because that was an idle time that was basically futile so that time needed to be used to learn to give testimonies and quote the bible and there were these members to supervise them and when they didn't do their parts correctly, didn't learn fast enough, they were whipped. If they use so many children, do we have any records of children? Or I guess they're quite old now. Is anyone like come forward to talk about their experiences in this sect that is uh, alive now? Actually, this Levi Leitinen, he was born in 1931. And when he was 
four years old, 1935, he was given to this cult. And immediately he was put into use and he had to start practicing. And when he left the cult in 1949, he came out and basically blew the whistle what he had gone through. And he had gone through several beatings. He had been whipped when he didn't perform well enough, when he was thought that he could think sexually about someone, even under a 10-year-old kid. And uh, somewhere in the mid-1940s, he was heavily questioned, whipped, beaten, because they were suspecting him of bestiality. And I'm not sure about this Levis case, but usually these kids under this kind of torment, of course, they admit of any wrongdoing, so it would stop. And that would lead to a punishment. And as we remember, one form of punishment was beating and whipping. And with these kids, there was even this kind of thing that they were put in the barrels full of cold water naked. That sounds really awful. I I don't have words to say anything else. And on top of that, in some cases, they were threatened that people would cut off their genitals. You said earlier that the cult kind of disbanded after a while. What made it stop? Well, in 1953, this Alma Cartano died. And after that, when their charismatic leader had gone and the end of the world didn't come, it kind of withered down. And people scattered and believers turned to non-believers on these uh, Suruton, uh, the carefree people that they were using the name of uh, people outside the cult who didn't care for their souls. They came themselves part of these normal everyday Lutherans and uh, the whole operation basically tried. Do we know what happened to the other one, the Tilda Reunanen? She died in 1965 uh, at some sort of a care home or an asylum. I'm not sure which one was it. And the legend has it that she used to uh, last a few years that she was living there, walk around the corridors and the rooms and ask for forgiveness, mumbling herself that she has done very bad deeds, betrayed people's trust, and then always came to conclusion that she will never have forgiveness because she has done s- such a bad deed. Well, at least in old age, she had a good realization because she was a disgusting, awful person. I must say that this thing was really surprising for me as a Finn and a basic Lutheran that we actually had these hardcore versions of Christianity in Finland no more than like even 80 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I have to say it. This is very heavy, heavy episode, and I'm so shocked because I mean, you expect this from like Bible Belt USA. I mean, you understand that people there are very like fanatical Christians, but in Finland, you know, there are a few dark horses in this country's past. Well, that's a material and a fuel for a future episode for sure. But hey guys, let us know down on the comments. What do you think? Have you heard of these Cartanolizus? Do you know any other interesting sects or cults that we could actually research and talk about operating here in Finland or even your part of the world? Let us know. Please leave us a like by hitting that thumbs up, hit that notification bell also, so you won't miss any of our weekly episodes. And as always, see you next week.